Cannes has begun to host what's called the Olympics of Cinema. This year, the festival's official selection has a lot to offer. There will be art and commerce. Cannes is first and foremost a marketplace. Uh, under the red carpet and all the, the glitters, there's, there's a lot of money being made and plenty of movies go to Cannes just to find distributors. A French film, Standing Tall, a social drama chronicling a young teen's difficult upbringing, starring Catherine Deneuve, was the opening night film. Often glossy, star-laden pictures, not always that good, launched the festival, but the selection this year of a serious French drama possibly signifies that Cannes is trying to redefine itself. Last year they had the film Grace and Monaco, which unfortunately was universally ridiculed, and I, and I think they were genuinely pretty embarrassed afterwards. Um, and I think they decided they had to make a change and go for something low key, low budget, with a, with a kind of heavy social message, and just show that they were actually a serious film festival rather than just purely out for glamour. Standing Tall was directed by a woman, which is also seen as significant because Cannes has been criticized in the past for underrepresenting female directors. Cannes brings together very different films, the highbrow movies that are in competition with the much more commercial mainstream pictures who have their branding plastered all over the beachfront hotels. US movies are very evident. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Overall, the American presence is strong this year, with films ranging from the big-budget Pixar animation Inside Out, set within the mind of a young girl, to a new film from Woody Allen and other arthouse attractions, to studio crowd-pleasers like a new Mad Max film starring Britain's Tom Hardy. There are also plenty of English-language films from directors for whom English is not their first language. There is an unusual trend, I think, this year in the number of European and foreign directors who are actually working in English because it makes your uh, audience that much larger. Paolo Sorrentino, who won the Oscar for um, The Great Beauty, is now in the festival with a movie called Youth, which has Michael Caine, Rachel Weisz, uh, Harvey Keitel, he's working in English. There's also uh, Matteo Garoni, who has been in competition twice, and this time he is uh, doing a film called The Tale of Tales, which is a more uh, fairy tale kind of mythological spin. Um, so it'll be very fantastical, uh, and, uh, and that's in English language with, um, with an English cast. Singing has always been important to me, but I never thought oh, I'll end up singing, I'll be a singer. There is no British filmmaker in competition this year, but there is a British documentary in the official selection on Amy Winehouse, a film which hasn't gone over well with the late singer's family, who've disassociated themselves from it. Other can attractions include an Anglo-Australian co-production of Macbeth, with top French actress Marion Cotillard playing Lady Macbeth, a Shakespeare play she believes has a tough reputation. The reputation that those characters in this play is that it's really, really hard, really complex. And it's, uh, I mean, it's a right reputation, <laughs> because it is. Asian cinema has a strong presence this year with Our Little Sister from Japan, as well as pictures from Ota filmmakers from Taiwan and China. For filmmakers, can can be an invaluable platform. Movies shown here can go on to international success and collect Oscars, but it's not always that way. For films that don't come up to par, exposure at can can leave a film with a negative media spin that's hard to shake off. It's a festival that's not without risk, but it nearly always manages to bring audiences some fresh, original, magical cinema.